Hi there, this is Anton from ORS, and I'm making a little video to show you how to use our one of our pre-trained deep learning models, specifically additive manufacturing porosity or defect detection model. So the I'm going to try and keep it relatively short. Um, the main idea is to show you how to use it properly. Let me first make this important point is um, your for this model to work properly, you need to calibrate the intensity scales. So this particular data is not um, calibrated uh, um, properly. It's um, having a histogram looking like this with a, a background peak here at a, something like 0 0.3 and a material peak at 1.6. So it's got a strange calibration. You mo most likely have a grayscale between zero and 65,535. In any intensity scale that you have, we need to calibrate it to a new scale. So how that works is you right click on the image channel once it's loaded. I've already loaded this before the video. Then you go to calibrate intensity scale. So what we do there is we've got a century scale, which is preloaded in Dragonfly. What that means is the background peak is zero and the material peak is 100. And you can check it down here on the histograms. You can make that a bit bigger. And you can just move that around. It doesn't need to be precise. It's just to give an indication of to get a, a reasonable calibration. So that because the deep learning model was trained on data where the background peak and the material peak are at zero and 100. So this makes the model more widely applicable and will work more easily on different data. So I'm going to calibrate this. And then what happens is you get a totally different um, uh, picture on the screen, the contrast changes. You, in your case, it most likely will be black if, if you have a typical grayscale. So in order to fix that, we go to main and we can reset the, the um, contrast across the range, or we can use a shortcut, this little area triangle and select inside the object. So what you see in this object is we've got quite a lot of and beam hardening, there's dark area in the middle and bright on the edges. And um, because of that, um, the training data was not, the, the model was not trained on data like this. So this makes a good case where the trained model probably will not work perfectly. So let's have a look at that. In order to simply apply a existing model, we go to the segment tab and segment with AI. But the pre-trained models are not here. These are in your system, the models you have trained. So you need to um, create a model in your system, either using deep learning tool or segmentation wizard. I'm going to do use deep learning tool first. Um, what we need to do here is we need to go, let me just move this around a bit. We've got, uh, we need to create a new model for your system. And the, at the architecture, we're going to click on the drop down box and we're going to go down there to pre-trained by the Dragonfly team. In this value box here, drop-down box, you can select the AM defect model version 1.0. So this model, I'm going to click on generate, and it might take longer in your system. In my system, it was already loaded before, so it's a bit faster. So um, uh, in this model, we can... Um, call it something, it's it's now, the model name is now pre-trained by the Dragonfly team AM defect model. So that is now not got any additional data, that's the original model. So now you can actually segment this on the original model. We can select it here somewhere. We'll find it down there. It's one of the options on the segmentation model that you can choose. And we can preview how that would work on this data directly. So it says we need to calibrate um, to the century scale which is interesting because we did calibrate it. Let's, let's just check that again. Calibrate. Okay. And this guy needs to go. And Okay. I, I think that's a, not supposed to be like that, but it should work. Um, it's a warning, unnecessary warning message there, just to make sure that you have your um, intensity calibration correct. So we're applying a deep learning model now to one slice. And what you get as an output is three classes, multi-ROI. You can put the background off and the material off, and you can see where the defects are segmented. So if you look at around and you zoom in, you see some pores are missed here. And 
there maybe a pore is not segmented sufficiently. So that's um, not a bad job considering the training data is totally different than this data, but this is now the reason why we want to take it to the next level. We want to use transfer learning. So typically if you have AM parts that have been scanned and you have a different kind of uh, additive material than what we've trained our model on, you have a different CT scan quality or different detector was used, different parameters were used. Many things can change the, the way the defects appear. And this, um, for this reason, what we're going to do is we're going to use the existing model and add some training data from your own um, case. So in this case, we're going to use this cube. We can use this exact same slice. So we're just going to add one slice of training data. And I'm going to use a deep uh, segmentation wizard for that. So we're going to go to a artificial intelligence segmentation wizard. So we, we can reset the contrast and we can uh, make the contrast a bit better like that, or we can use this um, this um, automatic or, or re, uh, rectangular contrast um, box. And remember to press escape to get out of the contrast mode. What we're going to do here is we're going to select, we can scroll and select a slice that we want to use to paint um, uh, Draw um, original data, so ground truth data. So we're going to click this little plus button. And if you've not done this before, um, don't don't be um, alarmed. It, you get used to this quite fast, um, and you'll see it's not too difficult. So before we paint that, I actually want to add a model here. So we're going to generate and import a model or add a model. So we're going to generate a new model. And um, actually, um, this is probably what you will be doing. You click. Again, on the architecture, go down to the pre-trained versions and select the AM defect model. So now we're generating that model, which has been already pre-trained and um, it's already loaded here now. And now we're going to add, we, we can click on this frame to make it training frame. This is going to be a training frame. And what we're going to do, we need to add one more class because the, the classes, as you've seen earlier, the first class is pores, we can call it that. Second class is material. And the third class is um, background, exterior. So what we're going to do is we're going to now paint one frame. So we're going to provide data for um, ground truth data for our deep learning model on one frame of your new data and add that to the model. So. One way to do that, if you click on exterior, the one way to segment the exterior quite in a fast way is using the smart grid tool. So um, if you now um, hold down the control button and scroll with your mouse to make that a little bit bigger and hold down the left button, you can paint the outside of the box of the material, the air outside the object quite easily. This is using the smart grid tool is a fast segmentation method and we don't need a precise segmentation on on that particular region if you want to do that more carefully you can zoom in and, and the smart grid tool um, allows you to optimize and do that so if you look carefully there at that edge region you can remove some little bit of extra excess material what we want to get at here is to con to paint the pores so that's the next step we contrast it we get out of the smart grid tool we're going to click on pores and we're going to go around in this object. What we're going to do, use is the local Otsu. So um, with a lower. So what this does is within the region of the, the circle, it searches for the lowest valued pixels and paints only those. So obviously it's quite noisy data. So you can add by holding down control and left click and remove by holding down shift and left click. So um, until you are happy with that. And the smaller you make the, the circle around the pore, the more accurate it becomes. And that's an easy way to, to segment the pores without spending hours on a single frame. So, but it's important to provide accurate data for the model to train properly. So there we um, might want yeah, that's good. That's good. And we might want to check 
We might want to change the contrast slightly so that to make sure we don't miss any pores. Um, like it. over there, we've got a pore. So you can, anybody with image processing experience will know this is a difficult uh, data set to segment. It's a varying brightness across the image. So it's a really challenging one. So um, this is exactly where deep learning is useful, challenging data sets like this. But don't take my word for it. Try it on your own data. Repeat this process on your own data and apply it to some other similar um, models or data sets. What I want to add here is that this process, let me just get the model going before I talk more. So on the material, we're now happy with it. We've selected or painted the pores properly. So now we right click on material and add all unlabeled voxels to pass. So now we have a full frame painting. Great. Now we go to we scroll down and we find this frame, for example. Let's make a new frame here. This is a nice one because it's got a um, pores in the dark and bright regions. So we're going to double click there and make this a monitoring frame so that we can have a look at that uh, while it's training. So now we're going to click on train here. And now the we're going through a typical deep learning model training process, but we're starting with a pre-trained model and adding one frame of data. So the new model should faster converge to a good solution and should be more robust also. So if we look at this model, the first epoch is not, it's seeing this as background class three, which is not correct, of course, but you will, within 10 or 15 epochs, you'll see a convergence to accurate pore segmentation. And then that is not only valid for this slice. This is what I was trying to say earlier. This will be valid for um, the, the model can be then applied to all similar scans of the same quality as the um, training data. So that means all similar scans on the same machine with the same amount of pores or the same type of pores would be segmented properly. So let's just wait a few epochs here. If it takes too long, I might trim the video at this point, but I think it'll take about 15 epochs. The pre-trained data was trained on samples with more porosity than the one that we're providing here. And also there was not beam modeling artifacts in the training data. So um, that's why it doesn't immediately work um, perfectly on this data. It's much more less pores in this um, image. Now we're starting already to get a good solution. Not perfect on this one, but good on these guys. And it's already converging to a good solution. So what you're seeing here is a convergence, although the first one, you know, it's a bit crammed on the y-axis. So after all is finished, you can actually zoom in here and have a look. You can analyze this and you can make a nice uh, picture for a presentation if you want to uh, report how you trained your model. Um, but it's, it's uh, also possible to make a video but it updates itself now in each epoch, so it's a bit difficult to demonstrate how to zoom there. So, of course, you can leave it longer than this. This is real time. This is using a laptop with a not a very powerful graphics card. So, um, on your big workstation, that might be faster, but and you might have more time. So, I'm just going to stop this. Um, the training will stop after 100 epochs or after it converges and not does not continue uh, learning more information. So um, it has an early stopping capability if, if that happens. So typically that depends on your hardware how long that takes. Uh, I think in this case on my system, it could take 20 minutes or so. But keep in mind, you don't need to do that for each sample. You just need to train your model once for all similar samples. So if we now are happy with that, we can exit. You can also continue painting more frames using that model and refining it and so on, but I'm not gonna do that now. We're going to call this now 
we're going to give it a name. We're going to say this is demo video model 26 October. So I've published it. And what we can do now is you remember we made a, a preview um, on, on this slice. So we're going to now check how, it, how much better it is on this particular slice. We didn't train on this exact slice. So we can go to segment with AI. We go to, uh, I need to find it. It's a, we called it demo video 26 October. And you can either segment all slices, which takes a bit of time, or just preview on the one frame here. So we're just going to apply the model to this one frame. Which is much faster, of course. And there we have a segmentation. So if you click on the multi ROI, we can put the background and the material off and you can look at this core here compared to before. If you toggle between the previous and this one, this is much better. So um, I don't see any pores which are wrongly classified. So that's, that's pretty much how it works. And now you have a deep learning model which works on all similar data of similar scans. And you can, of course, extend that further. And you can also send us data in, for us to uh, update and improve and extend our pre-trained model. So I'm very happy to receive your data and we're going to set up a FTP site specifically for AM porosity data to make our pre-trained model very, very robust. So in future, you will not even need to add data. So please let me know how this works for you and I hope you found this video useful. Thanks, bye-bye.